guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Charlotte. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe down below. I make anti-MLM content and some other day-to-day -day life content. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, hit that subscribe button and join the family. The other day I asked on Instagram and on Facebook if anyone had any questions about what it's like to be in an MLM. So today I'm going to be doing a kind of Q&A style video where I answer your questions on what it's like to actually be an MLM hun. For anyone who's new to my channel, I am an ex-Arbon hun. I sold Arbon for four months. So I have experience of being in Arbon, um, and I've also done a lot of research since coming out of it. I had so many questions, so thank you to everyone who gave me a question to answer. I'm just gonna get straight on into it because I've got so many to answer. And I'm probably gonna end up splitting this video into two, just so that it's not too long and I can take time answering the questions. So the first question I got was, why do so many people fall for them when they so clearly resemble pyramid schemes? I think a reason a lot of people fall for these MLM companies is because they don't have much awareness. That's what happened with me anyway. I didn't know what an MLM was. I didn't honestly even really know what a pyramid scheme was. When I first heard the term pyramid scheme, obviously I could kind of work out what it meant and that it didn't sound like a good thing. But honestly, I genuinely didn't know what an MLM was and I didn't do my research. It's my fault, I should have done my research, so I think that a lot of people don't necessarily do enough research before signing up because they often are being approached by a friend or a family member or someone that they trust or look up to. The next question I got was what were you promised that tipped you over the edge to join? For me personally it was the idea of being able to work at home. I am a performer and a fitness instructor so I need to be able to have time to go to auditions which can take up an entire day can take up an entire week if you get recalled and you have to go back several days. So the idea of being able to work from home was really appealing to me and that was what made me want to join Arbon. I also didn't realise how much work I'd have to put in for not very much in return. Obviously I was prepared to work hard because I wanted this to be successful and I wanted to earn money from this. So of course I was prepared to work hard but I was also expecting something in return and nothing came back to me from all the work I was putting in. This next one's quite an interesting one. Someone asked, are people higher up the chain recruited from outside the organisation joining at a higher level? So I don't know if this happens. I'm not aware of it happening. What this person said is that they know someone in particular who joined, it might have been Arbon they were talking about, or they joined an MLM and they managed to promote really quickly and they were quite surprised at how quick this person promoted through the company. From what I understand, people who make it to the top of the company have usually either been in it for many years, got in near the beginning, or if they get in now and manage to work their way up to the top, it's because they already have a large following. So perhaps they're already a social media influencer. Maybe they've already got a YouTube channel or they're big on Instagram, so they've already got thousands of followers. It's a numbers game and the more followers or subscribers you have, obviously, the more people you're gonna have. Say people manage to get interest from 2% of their followers. If you've got 100 followers, that's only two people who are gonna be interested, but if you've got 1,000, that's gonna be Obviously 2% of a thousand is 20. I don't know why I struggled so hard with that. <laughs> the more people you've got, the more people you're gonna be able to recruit and therefore the higher up in the company you're gonna be able to get and quicker. Someone else asked, what can you say to someone you know personally to prevent them from joining or to encourage them to get out early? My biggest advice is to do your research. And when you do your research, try to look to places other than the actual company or representatives from that MLM because they're obviously going to have a biased view. They want you to join or they want to sell products to you so 
they're not going to tell you the bad things. However, one thing you should look at from the website is the income disclosure statement for whatever company you're looking into. It's a well-known fact that 96 to 99% of people in MLM companies either make no money or they lose money. And if you're unsure whether this applies to whichever MLM you're looking into, go and have a look for yourself. Have a look at the income disclosure statements. I'm pretty sure most of these companies have them on their websites. It might not be super easy to find it because you know they don't want you to find it because it doesn't paint them in a good light. I know with Arbon they call it their compensation summary so have a look for documents along those sort of lines. You can encourage them to have a look at different YouTubers including Emily Leah, Kiki Chanel, Monica Symes, they're all really good anti-MLM YouTubers. I'd also recommend listening to the podcast The Dream. In this podcast they talk about MLMs and where they originally came from and how these companies are structured and how they work and people's experiences working in them. And then ultimately if they still don't get it, if you don't want to ruin that friendship or that relationship, just drop it. You've done your best to help advise them. Ultimately it's their decision and you can't make it for them. What was your light bulb moment when you realised how cult-like this company was? I've already made a video on this experience but I went to a training day called Leadership Academy. I'll link the video in the description down below so if you want to check it out go have a look at that video down below. That training day really opened my eyes to what this company was actually like. It was interesting how the products weren't spoken about the whole entire day. It was all about recruiting. It was such a forced positive atmosphere. They wanted us to all stand up and um, shout, I'm gonna reach whatever level and earn my white Mercedes. You know, it was very rallying and they wanted us to do Mexican waves, put it all on social media. And they were telling us, you're the ones here, you're the ones who care about this business and you're the ones who are going to be successful. The people who haven't bothered to come, they're going to fail. They also said if anyone isn't supporting you in your MLM, even if that's your brother, your sister, your best friend, your partner, that you need to cut them out of your life because you don't need that sort of negativity. Very cult-like and yeah, that was definitely a very eye-opening experience for me. It really did make me feel emotionally drained after that whole day, but I won't go into too much detail. Go check that video out if you'd like to hear more. This leads quite well into my next question. Was there a moment when you realised the business was more about recruiting than selling the product? So as I mentioned before, Leadership Academy was a great example of how this business is about recruiting rather than selling the product. Like I said, they didn't mention the products once in the whole day. I went because I thought okay maybe I'll be learning about these products that I'm selling because at the moment I don't know a whole lot about them and if I'm selling them I want to know how they work, what they're good for and you know ingredients that sort of thing but didn't get that at all it was all about how to recruit, how to grow your business but the first time that I realised it was more about recruiting than the product was when I did my first business launch so when I started my Arbon business. I was told in the first couple of weeks that I should do some business launches, you know, tell people about what I'm doing and um, invite them to have a look at my new business. So obviously I thought that that would mean talking about the products, saying what's on offer and seeing if anyone was interested in buying them. On my first business launch I only got one person and that was my mum. <laughs> which is funny now looking back at it, but how sad is that? That no one wanted to have a look at my business. I honestly messaged so many people, I put it out on social media, no one was interested. But on this business launch, my upline did a lot of the talking because I'd only been in it for a week, so I didn't really know what to say. So she was doing all of the talking and again, was talking about recruiting. And I said to her afterwards, I, would like next time to talk more about the products. We didn't really talk about the products at all. And I was told that you always lead with the business opportunity and try to recruit people first because it's easier to then go, oh, well, okay, if you don't want to do this business, do you want to buy some products? Rather than, oh, you've bought some products. Oh, actually, would you like to join Arbon and 
make your own business out of this. Someone else asked, how do uplines deal with their recruits complaining about not making any money? To be honest, I'm not sure how often this happens because these MLMs really encourage a fake it till you make it attitude and they'll say that you manifest what you put out so if you're complaining about not making any money you're not going to make any money so they really discourage any sort of negative thinking or critical thinking and they also use some guilt tactics you know they tell you don't give up on this if you do you failed don't be one of the people who fails at this another question i got was had many people approached you before you decided to sign up personally no i was only reached out to by one person before i signed up i signed up the first time i'd heard about it because i was in quite a desperate situation i just moved to london i didn't have regular work you know i just moved so i was looking for classes to be able to teach going to auditions so i had no regular income so when someone approached me saying that I could make money from home, I jumped on it straight away. And the last question I'm going to answer in this video is, how can I tell people I don't want to join? Loads of people keep asking me. So very straightforward, just say no thanks, it's not for me. You do not have to go in into any more detail if you don't want to. However, if you do want to tell them, just say you've done your research into this before and it's not for you. Or if you really don't want to bother with them you could just send them my first ever video of my experience in Arbonne a lot of my friends have done that who have been approached by people they've just replied with my video <laughs> so feel free to do that if you want to but or just ignore it you're not being rude if someone keeps coming back to you you don't have to reply after the first time you've said no thank you you don't need to keep replying to them if they don't get it from no thank you just ignore them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and a comment down below if you did. I'd love to know if you like this style of video and if you have any other questions that you'd like me to answer please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If this is popular I'm more than happy to do some more of these and look out for part two that will be coming very soon. Stay safe, stay healthy during this quarantine. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two.